Hi, welcome to the Potter's Roundtable. This is Pottery Shorts, a series of short pottery topics done on the fly. Welcome to the Potter's Roundtable, a monthly podcast where we share our passion for the ceramic arts and a collection of topics specific to potters. Remember to subscribe so you don't miss a single episode. Enjoy the show. Hi, this is Pottery Shorts. I'm Phil Bernberg, and this topic is adjusting a kiln sitter. And I have a small, I have an example of a small old kiln sitter here that we can use for demonstration purposes. And the kiln sitter consists of the, out, the, the control box on the outside with the, the end of the, the movable arm, the sensing arm, and then there's a weighted, there's a, there's a hinged weight here with a blade. And the way the kiln sitter works is, when the, when the end of the sensing arm on the inside of the kiln drops a certain amount because the cone has softened and bent, then the outside end of the arm, the outside end of the arm raises up and the claw, that's this hook on the outside end, releases the weight and it swings down and shuts off the kiln. That's the way it's designed to operate. But it's also designed to operate when the, the, the sensing arm moves a certain amount you, you want the sensing arm to, on the inside to drop enough so that it, it's not, for instance, if the, kiln, if the cone were to shift in the sitter, you wouldn't want it to shut off. So you want it, there's a certain amount that it was designed to, to move in order to shut off the, the kiln. And if the kiln, for instance, if, the, if it takes the, the arm, has to move too far, one of the problems that can happen is then the cone gets too bent. This is an example of an overbent cone. And the problem is when the cone bends that much before the, before the, the, the kiln sitter shuts off, then it actually has a chance of sticking because by this point the cone has gotten fairly soft and it can stick to the, support, the cone supports or stick to the arm and then actually not shut it off at all. So the, 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 this, it was really designed the kiln sitter is designed so that if you look at the end of the, the kiln sitter, when the rod drops down to the point where it's equal or level with the top of the supports, that's when it's supposed to shut off. It's not supposed to bend the cone into, you know, in half, okay? So if you're using a kiln sitter to actually control the firing and not just as a safety device, then it's even more important that your kiln sitter be calibrated or set up correctly so that it shuts off at the proper point. And this is, this is basically how you do it. Turn of our channel. Visit www.patreon.com and search for the Potter's Roundtable. Any amount you give will support the creation of a digital library of educational videos and podcasts to support artists, potters, and educators now and into the future. If you would like more information about our membership studio, classes, events, and multimedia productions at Washington Street Studios, visit our website at www.hfclay.com. So that um, I can, what I want to do is I want to, I want to adjust the kiln sitter so that when the rod tilts or bends just enough so that it's equal to the top of those supports, that then it releases the, it releases the weight on the outside. And I can do that two ways. I can just hold the kiln sitter, the end of the rod on the inside, at the proper position, and then do the adjustment, which I'll show you in a minute. Or I can also use a gauge, which is supplied with, when you buy a new electric kiln, it comes with a little gauge that looks like this. And in most cases, when, it, when the kiln sitter is actually shipped, it actually, this, this comes shipped on the kiln sitter. Now this is only, of course, for, this is not for, the kiln sitters don't, aren't even provided on electronically controlled or programmable kilns. This is only for manual kilns. But this little, this little disc, or this gauge, comes shipped with it. Most people think it's just a shipping, a shipping a stop and they throw it away. But it's actually a calibration gauge and it looks like this, blown up. And the idea is that if I place this over the end of the kiln sitter on the inside, the support, it slides over the, the, the kiln blade, the blades that support the cone go there, and the rod, you move the rod down so that it goes through the hole, and that's giving you, at that point, if you have it lined up like that, at that point, the hook on the outside should release the blade and shut off the kiln. If it's too high or too low, that's out of adjustment. 
So if it's nice if you can actually, you can either hold the, the rod in the correct position in this alignment with your fingers, or you can set this little gauge on it. So I'll put this gauge on it just to make it easier. Okay, so th there's a view of, I put the little gauge in place. Now again, I can hold it in that position with, if you don't have that with my fingers, but this just makes it a little easier. So now, what I'm gonna do on the outside is, there's a little set screw, there's a little set screw right here in this, in this weighted arm that I can loosen, and then this, if I loosen that, I can raise and lower this blade right here. And so what I want to do is, with the arm held in this position, I want to raise it up so that it's just grazing the bottom of the claw, or the bottom of the hook, which means that if it's just grazing it, that's where it will release it. So I, just, I can just take a little screwdriver, loosen this set screw enough to raise the blade up and down to where it just grazes that, the bottom of the hook, which means that when the hook goes up just a fraction of an inch more, it will, it, will, it will not catch the blade anymore, and it'll drop the blade and release it. Okay, so that's it. Thank you very much. I hope this was useful. Thanks for joining us today. If you enjoyed the presentation, please like it and subscribe to our channel, and share it with your friends. This way we get more viewers of our, of our videos. Also, check out our website, www.hfclay.com. We'd really like to thank our patrons for supporting our educational efforts, such as these videos. And if you'd like to consider becoming a patron, go to patreon.com and look for the Potter's Roundtable. The Potter's Roundtable is brought to you by Washington Street Studios and our patrons. If you enjoy the show, please subscribe, give us a five-star review, and tell your friends. If you want to learn more about Washington Street Studios and shared studio memberships, please visit our website at www.hfclay.com. Thank you, and we'll see you again next time on the Potter's Roundtable.